Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make these parametric uh, solids by just defining two points. Uh, here you can see that I can change the height of these solids, uh, the number I want, and the minimum and maximum of the radius of the circles, which I'm going to explain. And it's going to be an interesting uh, exercise for connecting a two set of circles. Uh, okay, let's get started from scratch and turn off everything and take a look at the algorithm step by step. Uh, first, we have two set of points, uh, which we can move them in uh, Rhino easily. Uh, just be sure to turn on the display uh, gumballs on. Uh, as you can see here, I can just move them in the XY plane. I'm not going to give them two different heights because they have to be in one plane. Uh, after that, I have made a linear array of these points. Uh, for the linear array, for the distance, uh, I can give it a Z with a number slider, which is going to be the distance between the points and the direction. And the number uh, here is the count we want, so we just have a number slider for that too. After producing these points, uh, what I want to do here is to, uh, let me show you here with the curve, uh, primitive and tangent arcs. We're going to use this technique to uh, find a connection between them. Okay, let me go to the full names so you can see the inputs. The first input is the circle A. So if I right click and set one circle, I can just make a circle here. And another one here is going to be uh, like this. So the good thing here is that you just give this a radius for the connection and here I just can give that to the radius and this is going to be the radius of the connection. So if I increase it or decrease it, you can see the connection here. Uh, we want to make this parametric, so that's why I just uh, use this algorithm. So after we have made those points, uh, what I want to do is to pr produce two circles. So as you can see here, the radius here is decreasing and uh, it's going to be reversed for the second point. Uh, to do that, you can see that we have a group of two with eight. So if I just go to the display point and bake this, uh, you can see it's from zero, one, two, three, two, seven. And what we want to do the, uh, is to put these two circles in one group and obviously these two also to one group so we can connect them uh, afterwards. Uh, to do that we can simply use a flip matrix and it's going to convert those two groups of eight into eight groups of two. And if I just uh, go here and bake that, you can see that this is going to be zero, one. So this is one group, the second group, third group, and so on. So the flip matrix is really important to put them back, those two circles, into groups of two. After flipping the matrix, what we want to do is to give them two radiuses, but this one is going to decrease and this one is going to increase. So what I have done here is made a range. The domain of the range uh, can be made with a construct domain and this is going to be the minimum and maximum. So the construct domain is going to be the minimum and maximum of the radius. We can just put this to smaller and this one to bigger. And we give that to the domain of the range. For the number, because we have a count of eight, when you divide a range into a number, it's going to give you one step more than that. That's why I just made this x the minus one. So for example, if I just divide, uh, for example, zero to 10 into two, uh, what it's going to give me is going to give me three numbers, zero, five, 10. So that is why whatever number we give to the n, so if we give it eight, it's going to give us nine numbers. And because we have only eight uh, circles, we just have to fix that with an x minus one. Okay, after doing that, we can have the numbers, but because we have a group of two, uh, what I have done here is graphed this, uh, these numbers into one group. Let me simplify that. So you can also see that easier. Uh, I've graphed this uh, into groups. So this is going to, the first number is going to go to the first uh, circle and so on. And also we just reverse the list. You can find it in set list, reverse list, and then graph and simplify it back. So the number is going to be reversed and then give it to the R input. So again, here you can see that we have two numbers. And if I just uh, connect a panel, use a shift key to add this here. Uh, you can see that it's going to be 7.95. And for the last number, 7.95 is going to go to the second. So it's going to be reversed. As you can see here, this is actually combining two reversed 
uh, numbers. Uh, we give that to the circles and after that we have to select those two circles with a list item. So the first set of circles are going to come here as an output and the second one is going to come if you just zoom in and hit plus. Uh, then we can use the curve uh, primitive tangent arcs, give the first circle to the uh, first one, the second to the second and here we have to define a radius. So let me just decrease the radius here so you can see it and increase that number okay so this is going to be the radius of the connection and it's going to give you two arcs you can see here uh, to convert them into a boundary what I have done here is that I have loft them together to make a surface and then we can use the intersection shape region uh, union to unite them all together if you connect it to the curve input it's going to automatically convert that into a curve so that's okay and this is going to be one of the regions we want to combine. Uh, the two other are going to be the circles. So as you can see here, we have to have groups of three. And that's correct because we want to combine two circles and the lofted uh, arcs to combine them together. We don't need the plane because it's going to find the bet, uh, best plane possible. And if I just go turn off everything here, you can see that we have combined them into uh, a curve. If I bake this, as you can see here, let me just bring it here. Okay, if I explode the curve, you can see that it's going to convert that into four uh, curves, uh, those two circles as an arc and two connecting arcs. So what we have to do here is simply rebuild them with a rebuild curve. It's going to be converted into one uh, unified NURBS curve. So if I bake that, obviously this one can't be exploded because it's a NURBS curve. Okay, uh, we can give this a degree three because we want a NURBS and 40 control points based on your project, just increase or decrease that. And then a surface to convert them into a surface like this. Uh, afterwards, we can extrude them up. Uh, the thickness or the uh, distance we want here is exactly the same as we have given to the linear array distance. So here we just connect that to the D and we have the extrusions. I've also connected a BREP edge and a custom preview to see the colors and the edges. And if I bake that, I will have that in Rhino. So that is uh, actually how you can make this parametric a connection between two circles using Grasshopper. Uh, I hope this tutorial was useful. See you next time. Bye. Remember that you can download these uh, example files all from our website, parametrichouse.com. And remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and let me know in the comments uh, if any additional uh, examples you need so we can record the tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.